My name is Wolfram Kleinitz, and I've been with Prozac and Gas de France for more than 37 years. And um, before I start my presentation, I want to give my thanks to the SPE Foundation for the opportunity to present this paper with the title Tail End Production, a Challenge to Sustainable Operating Strategy. And my scope of presentation is the following starting with introduction, and introduction that means definition of terms, definition of what tail end is, what our standing of sustainability is, and on the other hand side, some words concerning secondary recovery. Followed by my two main columns on which my presentation is based. First of all, causes of non-effective treatment plants, and then followed of P8, effect of pH value reduction in produced water reinjection, and at the end, normally the conclusions. The question, first of all, is definition of tail end phase in production. Unfortunately, sorry for that, no general definition is existing. But if you discuss this item with your colleagues or with partners from other ENP and companies, he often comes up with the following ideas. Time period behind brownfields, even under harsh economic conditions, some of them said, okay, operational stuff will not be replaced in the tail end phase. And someone heard that work over activities are decreasing at that time, but nevertheless increasing of operational problems. As you can see, more feelings and intuition as in a real state of definition. What's our approach? What's our approach? How we defined tail end phase? Let's have a look on this graph. I plot here on the, on the one hand side the dry oil production in cubic meters per day from zero to 1,000 cubic meters per day and on the other hand side the cumulative oil production between zero and four million cumulative oil production is, as you can see here at the x-axis. And this kind of curve covers the lifetime of an oil field of around about 45 years. It is an oil field close to the city of Hamburg and if you de overlap this graph, what we tried with another one, that means the, the graph about the water oil ratio in cubic meter per cubic meter versus uh, cumulative oil production, both time independent parameters, you come up with two interesting points. First of all, one with a, with a low water oil ratio, with the water oil ratio less than 0.1, and that means a water cut of nearly 10%. And on the other hand side, when the slope of the curve changed in the range of uh, 80, 87 cubic meter, uh, 87 percent water cut, and that means nearly to the water oil ratio of higher than seven. So we can divide this kind of graph into three parts. And the three parts are the following. That means on the one hand side, the black oil production with water oil ratio less than 0.1 cubic meter per cubic meter, the real field development case, and followed by the brown oil field, that, is, that means with a water oil ratio between 0.1 cubic meter per cubic meter and 7 cubic meter per cubic meter, the real production case, and then at least the tail end phase that means what we said, the beige oil field, because we have more water than oil with a water oil ratio higher than seven. If you are able, for example, to extrapolate this curve, you come up to the UECOP, and the UECOP is nothing else as the ultimate estimate cumulative oil production. And from that, you can really recalculate the total oil produced in the first case, for example, for the black oil field, 34% of the total oil production, then the brown oil field for nearly 40%, and then in the last quarter of 25% of total oil produced, the beige oil fields. So we can summarize to the following thing. Our definition of tail end phase in oil production is the definition is based on the daily dry oil and the water oil ratio versus the cumulative oil production and the tail end phase with the water oil ratio higher than seven cubic meters per cubic meter is very often in the range of the last quarter of the producible oil. That's our first definition. Let's go over to the second one. 
the definition of sustainability. Sustainability, how we define it, is a long-term robust improvement of the following cases. The following cases are the fluid dynamic conditions in an oil field, followed by the processing and treatment facilities, effort and expenses in manual surveillance, and regular operation cost. But nevertheless, an important feature is that measures to be implemented in the brown oil fields are that all major investments of the tail end phase must take place in brown oil conditions. And that means, with other words, decomplexing of the treatment train, automatization of the process sequences, and synergies with other ENP partners. That's what we tried over many years in Germany to find with work together with our ENP partners, sharing, for example, work overrigs, sharing lab activities, sharing warehouses to reduce the costs. That is one of the most important things. Okay, and now some words concerning the secondary recovery because some of you maybe uh, are not so familiar with this kind of issue and we have here on the one hand side the production well where gas, oil and water is produced to the subsurface and on the subsurface we have the, the separation of the gas, oil and the water phase and the water will be re-injected into the same reservoir in order to uh, to, keep the pressure, to keep the pressure as high as possible and on the other hand side for flooding. Due to the material balance, it's important to add another water to that. And that means, for example, the source water will be injected also in the same area into the reservoir to keep the pressure high, high as possible. This figure looks very simple, but it isn't because there's a lot of knowledge behind this graph. Never ever mix up both waters into one well. Don't inject fresh water as produced water, re-injected water into the same well as sometimes has been done. It is important, for example, otherwise to get some problems with scale formation or some bacteria problems and so on. The next graph I want to show you is a schematic treatment process to separate the gas oil from the water phase. And here we have our, our producer. And the first step after our producer on the on site is the gas separator. And from the gas separator, we have three different production trains. One is uh, due to the gas phase. The other one is the oil phase and then the water phase. Here we are uh, discussing at first uh, the first train, that is the gas train, that means the gas is going after separation going into a compressor to get rid of the higher hydrocarbons from your system to fix the dew point of higher carbons. Then the drying unit to get rid of the, the um, water on, from out of the system and then followed to the gas pipeline. The next step is for the fluid phase, that means the oil and the water phase it goes at first into a separator, three-phase separator, and following the, the oil train, we have a desalter unit to get rid of the, the salt content because the specification of a refinery is that the salt content in the oil phase should be less than 200 ppm, followed by an equilibrium tank to, for precipitating out of the, the water out of the system and at the end, the oil pipeline. For our water train, after the separator, we have a clarifier, and the clarifier could be different kinds of units. Some of them, I would say, can be a an, an coalescer, a tank, followed by a gas flotation unit, whatever. Then a filter that may, may, might be a one shell filter or anything else, and then the pipeline. In our systems, our pipelines are in a low pressure range. That means the pressure range less than 10 bars and then we hooked up at the end for close, close to the injector a filter, what we say the police filter, and the high pressure pump for re-injection. That means all our treatment systems are on the low pressure range. Now we have, can say what's the, some general aspects of treatment systems and secondary recovery is that a treatment plant Efficiency depends on fluid properties, and the fluid properties are, for example, the droplet size, 
as well as uh, NACL concentration in the water phase, some, um, some the viscosity of the oil and so on, and the process parameters as nothing else as temperature, pressure, and flow rate. The purpose of the treatment plane, it's very easy, is to fulfill the specification for gas, oil, and water, for the gas, oil, and water phase under economic conditions. Okay. This is the end of my introduction. That means introduction, definition of the term of um, tail end, definition of the term of sustainability, some words concerning the secondary recovery. Now we want to focus on my first column, and that is uh, technical causes of non-effective treatment plans we have encountered in many, in many countries around the world. And this is the ranking over here with seven different items, starting with non-uniform non fluid flow, followed by plant-specific cycling processes, short-circuiting and treatment plans, addition of foreign fluids to the system, re of produced fluids in your system, uncritical use of oil field chemicals, a very interesting issue, and at the end, over-engineering of treatment processes, what we found. As you can see here, some of them, uh, what I showed you, some of them are historically to the oil field, some of them is, are related to the production, some of them are man-made. So I want to highlight uh, different, from, from the beginning, to the end, some of them to make sure that you get the real understanding what I will I'm talking about. Non-uniform fluid flow. Non-uniform fluid flow. Non-uniform fluid flow is shown here. For example, the fluid flow rate downstream of a gas separator. And what I showed you is the flow rate on the y axis, the flow rate from 15 to 30 cubic meters per hour and in the x-axis from 0 to 140 minutes. What happened with the flow rate, you see there's a big fluctuation. A fluctuation between 80 cubic meters per hour to 28 cubic meters per hour, and there are plenty of reasons for that. Some of them are related to picking the pipeline. Some of them are relating to getting oil wells in production, getting wells out of production, and slug flow in your system. By adding the, the wealth at the, end, at, at the outlet of the tank, you can compensate, for example, this kind of flow rate to, to, to a very low rate. That means, for example, smoothing between 17 to 20, 22 cubic meters per hour. And what is the reason why we, are, why we think that it's so, so important? Because you have to focus, for example, on the distribution of solids in your system. This is shown in over here, the uh, and you have to distinguish between the uh, sedimented solids down and at the, and trained on the pipeline in six o'clock position, and on the other hand side, the suspended solids in the flow regime. And the, the rate between both is focused on the flow rate. That means if the flow rate increases, you are able to pick up solids from the ground, from the pipeline ground into the, into the flow. And what happened? You are impairing your water quality as well as the oil quality, bottom, uh, bottom sediment, and water is increasing for your oil phase. Here I want to show you, in this kind of graph, I want to show you why it is so important to keep the flow rate as constant as possible in your system. We have here on the one hand side the fluid velocity with meters per second from 0.1 to 0.6 and on the x-axis the grain size in millimeter. Please watch the different uh, dimensions in here. And what happens is if you increase the flow rate from, for example, 0.1 meters per second to 0.3 meters per second, you are able to pick up particles in the range of 0.1 to 1 millimeter. And therefore, for it is, it is important to keep the flow rate constant and keep the flow rate as low as possible. How should the treatment plant be structured in the tail end phase based on that what I showed you before? The treatment unit must be designed to ensure a constant 
output quality despite fluctuating input values. That means keep the flow rate as constant as possible. And priority must be given to the uniform contamination in the flow this, uh, rather than to the absolute value. It's more important, for example, to have continuously 200 ppm oil and water than changing between 100 and 500 ppm. This can um, support any other treatment process behind the gas water separator. The second step is uh, cycling backflow processes in water treatment systems, what we have seen very often, and this is uh, shown over here. We have a, a production well, and the wet oil after the gas separator is in, uh, showed in, in two different treatment trains. One is a tank followed by a coalescer and then by an induced gas flotation unit. And the second one, for example, a tank, a coalescer, and a one shell filter. In both cases, what happened is that the enriched solids are all backflowed into the tank in order to keep the, the costs for treatment as low as possible. And what happened is that these enriched solids, normally covered with a lot of chemicals in the system, uh, gets these problems later on by recirculation uh, over the time and that increased the impairment of your water as well as on the oil phase. So one can say it's important, for example, that the sedimented solids which accumulate during treatment must be discharged as early as possible from your system. Plant-specific cycling processes, what's standing behind? Sedimented solids which accumulate during treatment, also the chemicals accumulate during treatment, must be discharged from the system as early as possible. Otherwise, result in irreparable damage to the injection well and thus for stimulation and work over costs. Therefore, keep the, the solids out of the system as early as possible. And that means solid management in production most cases, solids are recycled. Consequently, bottom sedimentary and, uh, and water in oil increases. And the water quality for produced water reinjection, that means PWRI, is impaired. A continuous discharge is highly recommended. The second step, or the, excuse me, the, the third step, short circuiting behavior in treatment plants. That's what we very often find as one of the major problems in the treatment is the direct passage of liquid from the inlet to the outlet. And that is something else as, for example, dividing the total volume by the flow rate to get the retention time. That is the direct passage from liquid from the inlet to the outlet in minutes. We call it breakthrough time. Oil water separation and solid sedimentation efficiency in such a unit are reduced by that, and if, you, if it is possible for you, for example, to start a tracer test or multidimensional simulation, it is easy to elucidate the flow regime, and from that you get an improvement on your treatment process. Let's explain the reason for the different kinds of volumes you have in such a treatment, plan, treatment plant. Here's, for example, a tank. We have an inlet, we have an outlet, and what's our standing of, of the breakthrough time, of the breakthrough volume, is shown over here. That is the direct passage from the inlet to the outlet in minutes, and that means 10 to 5 to 10 percent of the total volume is a breakthrough volume, and followed, for example, by the mixing volume with 50 to 70 percent. This is a yellow color over there. And at the end, the death volume or stagnant volume was 30 to 45 percent. And the stagnant volume is a volume where normally bacteria and all the other kinds of, of particles are existing. OK, nothing is as good as an example. Let's have a look on the three-phase 80 cubic meter separator with buffets. What we have done here is um, a tank we installed for uh, in, into a tank different baffles as what we saw.
that will be useful to prevent any direct breakthrough from the inlet, from the emulsion inlet to the water outlet. And therefore, for our feeling, what we saw that is the best case is to install, for example, nearly 10 different buffets over there to prevent this breakthrough. We have done that. The blue, the blue color corresponds to the water phase. And we take the, the tank into production, 80 cubic meters in total. And what happened is we followed the oil and water content from the outlet. Not only, not only we do, do not analyze the oil and water content for one day, for two days, as you can see here, for a period of nearly three to four months. And what happened? You see the, diff the, the high fluctuation between 80 to 290 ppm. And that's not what we expected. And so we start uh, coming back to say, okay, how we can elucidate the flow regime on that. And this was the reason why we start the multidimensional simulation, that means the CFD code, code by, the, uh, by a fluid program for visualization of complex chemical and technical relationships and their parameters during this kind of, of uh, process. In order to, to get some results for short-term development, it's very useful, for example, if you change the flow rate, the fluid level, you can easily detect it from this calculation. And um, on the other hand side, you can reduce the time period for con conversion work in the field. Okay, we have done that. And I will show you the results. What's showing in here is uh, the velocity vectors of inside the 80 cubic meter tank by this kind of calculation, by the computer simulation. And what happened, we see the inlet, and with a high flow rate, gets the a, a red color. The arrows with the red colors showed high flow rates, with the yellow color, immediate flow rates, and with the blue color, is a, quite a low flow rate. What we expect is the flow rate constantly with a, in the whole system with the same color, that means more to the blue size instead of the red one. What happened over here? As you can see, barrier number six is totally useless, do nothing. Barrier number one pushed the, the, the fluid up to the top, to the oil phase. Barrier number two and barrier number six worked like an, an in, internal circle in the system. This next one is Barrier number four and barrier number five is totally useless. Barrier number six, what happened, worked like an orifice. They pushed the fluid with a high, with a high flow rate. You see the, the red color over there. And then far away from the surface, we got here at the end on the outlet. The outlet with the flow rate, the, the very small Flow, uh, very small section in that, and only a, a small time period where we got the, the direct connection between the surface of the oil and the water phase to, to get rid of the, the oil droplets. Okay. Then we have changed the barrier. We have changed the barrier, nothing else, as we have changed the barrier number six. And that means, for example, you have to take the, the tank out of production, you have to, to open it, you have to clean it, you have to change the buffer inside, and then you get this once again into production. It costs a lot of money, but we have done that. And uh, as you can see here, only by changing barrier number six, uh, we get a, diff a totally different profile. We get a, a less red color, and we got more success in treating the unit. And that's what we can see easily from the picture before and after, that it means the oil and water content and the position of barrier number six before with a high fluctuation, the fluctuation between 80 to 280 uh, milligrams per liter oil and water, and later on by changing barrier number six to another to, to the downhold position, we got uh, still a, a small amount of fluctuation, but nevertheless a quite lower over over a whole, uh, over a wide different of time. That means nearly also uh, four months with this kind of, of low values. 
And that's our understanding of sustainability. There's no other chemical involved. There's only the way by engineering, get a, by the en engineering process, by the way how to understand the, the total process, and this keeps our system quite efficient. Okay, so we can, one can say that uh, uh, in that case, that the breakthrough volume, for example, is, uh, can cause a lot of problems in your treatment process and is, is the reason for fluctuation in oil and water content. Addition of foreign fluids, what does it mean? Sporadic injection of liquids from other sources destabilizes the treatment processes, and that means, for example, processes where, you, where we add water from, from a um, suction truck as well as a, well, uh, as a separator, and here uh, other sources are the well, the well checker fluid, fluids from well stimulation and from suction trucks. Small picture of that. We have here addition of foreign fluids to the treatment plant. We see here the, the water trucks and the booster pumps behind the water trucks. That means by boostering the water from the truck into your system with a high flow rate, this destabilizes your whole fluid system and that causes the problem with your treating process. With other words, 45 minutes for water injection with a high flow rate into the system destabilizes your fluid system for more than four and a half hours. General aspects of application of oil field chemicals. That's one thing what I want to stress in here because what I said in the beginning is that I'm a production chemist over a long time working in the field and there are two, two subjects I want to focus on and I want to, to, to show you is that treatment problems increases exponentially with the number of chemicals employed in your system. That is quite very important. And the other point is that the uncritical use of oil field chemicals have caused as many problems as they have cured. Nothing else. Only these two sentences, uh, in my opinion, is important for the general understanding of chemical application, oil field chemical application in that field. Treatment problems increases exponentially and uncritical use have caused as many problems as they have occurred. Some words concerning about the complex of the treatment process. And I can say from, from my opinion over the last years that oversimplification of production engineering processes has led in general to complicated production practices. And no one wants to have complicated systems. In reality, it's the lack of production engineering that creates complexity. And on the other hand side, complicated systems have led generally to poor quality operation. Let me say it in another way around. It looks a little bit complicated over here, but nevertheless, I will, I will, I will elucidate this kind of process. Let's have a look over here. This is a footstep on the ground. And you can take a magnification glass, for example, to, spec to uh, speculate what's, what's behind. Is that a man, was that a woman, or what is the weight, and what, whatever, you can do that. But you don't see the whole picture. And in, in, for my case, it is important, do not interpret the color of a picture, you have to see the whole picture. We have to have a look of 30, 360 degrees around. And if you do that, you see the following. What's that? It's Mother Nature going ahead with flowers and fruits in their hand, easily walking away, followed by the scientists over there. The scientists using glasses to look every time in the wrong direction, using a lamp to get lights on the ground, using a stick to follow, for example, the footstep of Mother Nature. And it's not easy to do that. 
This is a graph, for example, or this picture is from 1618. And, once, and one, thing, one can say it's nearly the same in our times. And what is the reason for that? Why it is the same? The reason for that is that custom is a great guide in human life. So we can summarize my first column for the reasons for non-effective treatment plans in the ranking I've showed you at top, ranking non-uniform fluid flow, plant-specific cyclic processes, short-circuiting and treatment plans, addition of foreign fluids to your system, reemulsification of produced fluids on some gap widths on your um, valves, uncritical use of oil field chemicals, and over-engineering on treatment processes. Now we can change over, you see it on the color of the frame, we change over to sustainable effects on pH value reduction for injection water. The same seven, not the same, but also seven different items is due to the effect that we reduce the pH value in the injection water from nearly 6.5 to 7 by uh, hydrochloric injection down to a range of 5, 5.2. And that caused a lot of positive um, issues that, for example, the improvement in oil water separation in the low acid region, not less than 5, 5 to 5.2. Dissolution of carbonate scale, reduction of anaerobic bacterial activity, reduction of oil and water content, squeezing the, the oil out of the water by the low uh, by the acid region, and the next one is the dissolution of iron sulfate, reduction of foaming tendency of oil, and the stimulation continuous wash of your injection horizon. These are the, the seven major issues, and as you can see here, most of them are related to bacterial activity. Most of them bacteria activity in our tail end phase, and that means with a, with a high water oil ratio. And so we want to focus uh, at first on the activity of, of sulfate reducing bacteria, and sulfate reducing bacteria are not guilty for everything. That's important. Yeah, the prerequisite for SRB activity, activity are three different issues. One, you need water. You need a substrate, that means an energy source, and you need a sulfate. And if you have three, uh, these three coming together at the same time, then you are able that, that bacteria can grow in your anaerobic conditions of an oil field treatment system. Here is a scheme of a sulfate reducing bacteria, and what we, have, what we can show here is that bacteria should be an SRB bacteria. There are plenty of different bacteria, more than, than hundreds, more than uh, 200 different species. But here, for example, I want to show you how they are working. On the one hand side, we have a reduction system with the sulfate will be reduced for an energy source to H2S. It's on the bottom over here, and this H2S can react with iron to iron sulfate, and iron sulfate causes a very impermeable filter cake to the ejector. This is for the energy source, and on the other hand side, for the, for the cell mass, form cell mass, you need, you need a substrate, the oxidation process, and the substrate will be oxidized to CO2 or hydrocarbonate, and this can cause with uh, calcium in your system, calcium carbonate, by shifting the pH to the alkaline region. So we have two different kinds of solids by the process. On the one hand side, the iron sulfate, and on the other hand side, the calcium carbonate. And what is the substrate? What kind of, of substrate will be used during the process? Substrates are, for example, hydrogen, due to not very well adjusted uh, cathodic protection in your system, can cause the hydrogen formation. Methanol, ethanol, for example, these are the solvents for oil field chemicals. We are feeding the bacteria by adding the oil field chemicals, then formate and acetate, for example. It's also a, a wonderful substrate for sulfate-producing bacteria. Acetate 
in some cases we are using this for as well stimulation you can use it as long as your as, as long as your temperature is higher than 80 degrees C low fatty acids is the other substrate and higher fatty acids the sulfate and as well as the sulfate can be used for for the, the energy source and the sulfate level should be higher than 10 milligrams per liter. If it is higher than 10 milligrams per liter and you have enough substrate, bacteria can grow on. Here, for example, is the reason why we recommend the reduction of pH from nearly 7 to 5. And then this graph is shown on the on the y x on the x-ax, for example, the pH value between 5 to 9 and the, the neutral point at 7 and on the other hand on the x-axis the doubling rate I will explain the doubling rate a little bit later but here we have three different strains of SRB of SRBs in our system and the doubling rate for example of 100 that means it takes you 100, 100 hours to get from one bacteria two bacteria and for 50 for example 50 hours from getting from one bacteria two bacteria this are, is a doubling rate as what you can see over here for example in the range of five and eight to nine we have a low activity the bacteria are not dead they are reduced in activity and on the other hand side if you go over to the in the range of pH of seven you get the high activity and when we add for example the hydrochloric acid what we are doing is we are shifting from the high activity to the low activity that means in the near available area no bacteria can further grow on because the environment is not um, not very useful for them okay that means general aspects of SRBs in the tail end phase a treatment process that is quite important can't be operated under sterile conditions it's impossible and control the limitation factors first that means the sulfate level is the sulfate level higher than 10 ppm then and you have potential substrates in your system for example methanol acetic acid and so on this can cause the growth of bacteria you do not need any high sophisticated uh, microbial investigation only look at the sulfate level and on the other hand side on your kinds of substrates in the system and we will recommend for example the monitoring of the h2s content in the gas phase and control the scales for carbonate and iron sulfate okay coming up to the end coming up to the effect of pH value reduction for the total filterable solids in your water yes, that means for example we are shifting to the injection site that means to the, our produced water reinjection system and one can say this is what we see here is, is an, uh, a graph of all the components in the produced water reinjection system that means there are sands and clays and bacteria, corrosion products, rest oil, asphaltines, and this can cause this kind of impairment of the, of the injection horizon and that uh, comes up with the problems of injectivity. If we reduce, for example, the hydrochloric, um, the, the, the pH with hydrochloric acid to a pH of 5, 5.2, and we, so we come up to to a composition of our injection water with a higher permeability with such a high permeability for example that we can easily inject the water over a long time without any problem and for example the hydrochloric acid we inject in here is in the range of 200 and nearly in some cases of 400 ppm that depends on the buffer, co uh, buffer concentration um, of, your, of your water of your injection water here an example of the stimulation of, the, of, of an injection uh, zone. We have here three different plots. On the top, the injection pressure between 100 and 150 bars. Then the pH value and at the end and the bottom, the water quality ratio at, of the injection water. What you can see here is that over a longer period of time from nearly July to August, there's a steadily increase 
of the impairment of the water quality, and this caused a drastic increase of the injection pressure of this uh, zone. And what happened is that we start to inject the pH reduction in the end of August in here, and after one week of reducing the pH from 7 to 5, we got the first results. That means the injection pressure drops down to 100 over a longer period of time. The pH value uh, changed later. That is due to the fact that we have to dissolve a lot of particles in our system. And at the end, the water quality after a longer period goes down to a reason, to, to, to a level of quite good quality and constant good quality for the injection water. So, recap all the systems. Our sustainable effects of pH value reduction are the following, as improvement on oil water separation, dissolution of carbonate scale, reduction of anaerobic bacteria activity, reduction of oil and content, dissolution of iron sulfate scale, and reduction of foaming tendency in your system, and at the end, the low acid wash, or what we can say, stimulation of our injection horizon due to a higher permeable filter cake build up by the low pH. Okay, at the end, some words concerning the future aspect and treatment processes in the tail end phase. One reason is, we can say, is to, com uh, the, um, to combat complexity in your system, make it as simple as possible, treatment systems becoming too complicated over time, starting as, as early as possible with decomplexing of your system, and at the end, in almost every case, it is best to keep the system robust and economically and quite simple. So, we can summarize the following points in here is an attempt for definition of tail end phase has been made, the water oil ratio higher than seven cubic meters per cubic meter, and in the last quarter of total producible oil, and on the other hand side, the term sustainability has been defined as a low OPEX and robust decomplex treatment method. And non-constant flow rates, recycling of high total filterable solid fluids and short circuiting in tanks are the main reason for non-effective treatment plants. And at the end, conditioning of injection water to the pH of round about five by hydrochloric acid has been discussed as a tool for, for several OPEX benefits in the tail end phase. Okay, so I end up with this situation, but before I close, I tried to put all these, my saying, in one word, in one sentence. And the sentence that covers all my, my presentation is, the simplest is the most difficult. Thank you for your attention. Thanks.